noticed how critics will sometimes categorize a novel as either plot-driven or character-driven? If that's got you puzzled about how it applies to the story you're writing, I can understand why. They make it sound like you have to choose between the two. The truth is, you don't. Let me explain. Plot-driven is the critic's shorthand for saying that a story is exciting, but the characters are a little thin. For example, a Tom Clancy techno-thriller or Naomi Novik's high fantasy novel Uprooted might be called plot-driven. Character-driven is the critic's shorthand for saying that the characters are complex and fascinating, but the plot is a little thin. Many literary novels, such as On Chesil Beach by Ian McEwan or Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout, might be called character-driven. Shorthand may be necessary for critics, but for writers, this binary reduction is meaningless because the simple fact is that all stories are character-driven. Plot cannot exist without characters. Characters drive plot, period. What's at work here is causality. E.M. Forster, one of my favorite authors, summed it up this way. The king died and then the queen died is just a sequence of events. But the king died and then the queen died of grief is a plot. The queen's sorrow caused her death. The characters caused the plot. To illustrate this dynamic even further, look at two of Shakespeare's best-known characters, Hamlet and Romeo. What do we know about Hamlet's character? He is introspective, analytical, cautious. And what do we know about Romeo's character? He is passionate, intrepid, bold. In Act One of Hamlet, Hamlet encounters the ghost of his dead father, who tells him he was murdered, and the killer was his own brother, Claudius. This stuns Hamlet, especially since his uncle Claudius is now married to Hamlet's mother and is king. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night and for the day confined to fast in fires till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. List, Hamlet, list, oh, list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love. Oh, God! Revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder! Most foul. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember. <laughs> oh, Earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Yes, by heaven! Oh, most pernicious woman! Oh, villain, villain, smiling. The play is about Hamlet longing to take revenge on Claudius, but being constantly restrained by his own meditative, analytical character. Now, what if Romeo found himself in that situation? Desperate to avenge his father's murder, the intrepid and impetuous Romeo would kill Claudius in Act One, and the story would end. There would be no Hamlet plot. As for Romeo and Juliet, by the end of Act One, Romeo is madly in love with Juliet, and she with him. Thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? O oh, trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. But their love is perilous because their families are mortal enemies. Romeo, though, will risk everything to be with Juliet, even risk being killed by her family. Now, if Hamlet found himself in that situation, he might become so engrossed in pondering the labyrinthine nature of love, 
that Juliet, unaware that he adores her, would marry Paris, the man that her parents have chosen for her, and the story would end. No Romeo and Juliet plot. So always remember this. Characters create plot, period. The creation of compelling characters is essential to your work as a writer. I call it inventing lives, and you'll find lots more about it in my book, Page Turner. Happy writing.